I am blown away by the beauty of Labrador. This is enjoyable, guys. This is so beautiful. We're Michael and Holof. Together with our German Shepherd, Kana. This is for you. Oh. We've been traveling full time around the United States in our camper van. Kana, what you doing? We arrived in Canada to explore the vast land of the Great White North. So come, join us and travel around Canada in our home on wheels. Previously, we traveled to Lancer Meadows on the northern tip of Newfoundland. It's a significant place on the island, as well as probably one of the most beautiful coastlines in Newfoundland. Hey, Kana. Hey, girl. Good girl. Just enjoying our coffee because it's way too early. Half an hour early, actually. Good morning from a town of... Porto Schwa. <laughs> or just Porto Schwa. I really need to brush up my French. <laughs> just, no, you don't. It's just Porto Schwa. So what's the plan today, Michael? We are going to go visit a place that I have never been before. The province is not Newfoundland. The province is officially called Newfoundland and... Labrador. Right, so we are close enough to a ferry that will take us across to Labrador that we decided what the heck, we may as well go and see the second half of the province. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do today. If you look at the map, Labrador is just a, like a huge, mostly unpopulated area of Canada. You know, I honestly couldn't recall anybody that ever been there. So I'm really super duper excited to go to like a really last traveled place. Yep, so we're gonna cross over on the ferry in a couple of hours and go see what the other side looks like. Maybe the grass is greener over there. Yeah. It's probably not because it's freezing in Labrador. <laughs> no moose, no caribou, no nothing here. I feel like we're totally getting ripped off on this Newfoundland big game deal. <laughs> They said, if you don't like the weather here, you just have to wait for five minutes. And it's sort of true. We've been waiting for 15, 20 minutes now and it hasn't changed. <laughs> so moody weather of Newfoundland. Oh, we're here. Yeah. Go get tickets. Go out in the rain, get the tickets. Rainy. Yeah, we're gonna put, I'm going to pay for all. I get the, my band come all around. Oh, there you are, we tell Okay, perfect. Okay, so we get it at 3 to go to Thank you. We were told that it is like a cheap ferry, but it's not so cheap. Like we have to pay $55 uh, one way for two people and a van, but it's not a big deal. It's not expensive. And unfortunately, we have to leave Kana in the van again, but at least it's only for like less than one third of the time. She's not going to be happy. Hello. Hi. Okay, you're number nine. Yeah. There's two people. Yep. Yep. Fold your mirrors before you find the boat, and I'm going to put you in lane. Right behind. The, oh, the, oh yeah, yeah, the creek inside there. Lining up for the ferry. Luckily, we just walked in and they have spot for us. But according to a lot of people, uh, it's highly recommended to get a reservation prior to. I think there's a number that you could call and make a reservation just to make sure that you get a spot on the ferry. Thankfully, we do have a more flexible time. Therefore, we could just show up and hope for the best. And luckily, today is one of those days that we have good luck. Daddy's puppy, aren't you? That's a good girl. Are you ready to go on the boat? I'll have a separation anxiety now. Are, are you ready to go on the boat? Oh, sweetheart. Connor. The ferry's coming around the corner. Here she comes. That's our ferry. Excited? Yeah, I've never been to Labrador before, so obviously I'm excited. And it's gonna be a nice day. Yeah. Crossing our fingers that it stays that way. Fingers and toes. I can't cross my toes. <laughs> Almost our turn, I think. Yay! I hope they're gonna tie this thing down. <laughs> Bye, Kana. Well, the good news is we can see Kana from the top deck here, so. <laughs> I really, really, really wish she could be with us. 
buying different land. She wants to be out here with us so bad. I uh, know. Nothing you can do about it. Rules are rules. Yep. Well, the good news is the top of our van doesn't need to be cleaned off. It's pretty clean. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely didn't expect that we're gonna land in Quebec. I thought we were going straight to Labrador, but here we go. We're almost arrived in Quebec. We're almost in Quebec? Yes. We're not going to Quebec. We are surrounded by Quebec. Oh yeah, but we're not going to Quebec. Oh, we're gonna land in Quebec. <laughs> almost there, kind of. Hey, Kana. Hey. hey. Oh, we're back to see you. Come on. <laughs> oh, puppy. Okay, come on down. Come on down. Take Why not? the next ride onto Avenue Jacques-Cartier. Avenue Quebec. Your fifth province, Kana. Quebec. Take the next ride onto Boulevard Dr. Camille Marcoux. Camille Café. Almost officially in Labrador. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Good. Thank you. This guy over here? Yeah. Can you go with him and he'll take your documents from you? Sure. Okay, just two of you? Yeah. yeah. Perfect, thank you. I'll make sure it's safe there now for you when you get out. It's nice of him. Yeah. There you go, Michael. Welcome to Labrador. We are heading out to our first site in Labrador. So we've been driving along the Trans-Labrador Highway, but we just had a huge time jump. We went to Quantum Leap. Yeah, Quantum Leap from <laughs> crossing the border from Quebec to Labrador. Quebec was in Eastern Time Zone, and Newfoundland Labrador is... In Newfoundland and Labrador Time Zone. Yeah. So when you come from Quebec into New Brunswick, for example, you lose or you gain an hour, whatever it is. And then in Newfoundland, you gain another half an hour. But because we were in Quebec and went right to Newfoundland, we skipped over that one extra hour time zone and went right an hour and a half. Did you feel the disruption in the space-time continuum? Yes, I feel like a little bit younger, yeah. I guess, or older or whatever. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> goosebumps. Go look at the goosebumps going over that. I just kept thinking 11,000 pounds on wood and just crushing it. But I'm sure there's been transport trucks over it many times, but still. It just doesn't seem like a bridge should be made of wood on a highway. And we survived. Construction. Yeah, they just set off some dynamite, but we didn't know they were going to do that or we would have had the camera going. But you can still see the puff. Of course, Kana's really concerned now. She heard it. Sorry, girl. Sorry, girl. Well, that must be what they just blasted off. Yep. It's all a freshly exposed rock from the blast. Look at that. Labrador's expanding. Spending the ever-growing needs of Labrador traffic. This is Red Bay. Yep, this town has been here for 500 years. Continue for one and a half kilometers. We've arrived in our first site to visit here in Labrador. This is a Red Bay, which is the home of one of the National Historic Sites of Canada. Now we're going to the Interpretation Center to learn a little bit more about Red Bay. As its name suggests, Red Bay Basque Whaling Station was the center of an active 16th century European whaling industry. Red Bay is the most complete and best preserved compound of its kind. It's now been granted the status as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's a really well-designed museum and there's so many different artifacts around. So limited time, we just try to learn as much as we can right now. I think one of the coolest things is how they measured the speed they were going, the longitude and latitude. Some of these instruments, they let out a long line. It was attached to a piece of wood and they would use an hourglass and how long it took to get away from that piece of wood, or I guess. And they'd measure the distance and the time, figure out how fast they were going. That's really neat. Now, of course, we just use GPS. This is a great auk bone. As a child, I learned about the great auk. It was a bird that went extinct 100 years ago. I don't know when exactly. 
that's a bone. I've never seen one before. And that's what a great auk looks like right there. Penguins were named after the great auk. Penguins were discovered later and the great auk had already been seen. So the genus Penguinus is what they called penguins because they so closely resembled the great auk. But the great auk is not related at all to the penguin. I always find it fascinating. I mean, I've been to your country, so I've seen things like 2,000 years old and things like that. But it's really cool to see it in my own country where you, you, know, you hear about things that are 1500s and 1600s because you don't get a lot of that around here. And to go in through there and see these old Basque ships that were whaling in here in the 15 and 1600s uh, is really kind of neat. And then there's still people here hundreds of years later. A moody place, because now it's starting to rain again. So it just stops and rains, it stops and rain. Uh, I think it's three or four times so far. It's Newfoundland, Labrador, same thing. Leaders, turn left. It's a little bit chilly out here, but tonight we are camping at the Tracy Hill Trailhead in Red Bay, Labrador. I am loving this weather. I can even see my breath a little bit. Yes. But it's not below zero or anything like that. It's just perfectly nice. Cooking burgers, beautiful view of the bay. There might be some whales out there tomorrow morning. Who knows? Ooh. Doubt it though. Kinda nice, enjoying it too. She established her spot. Making with some burgers that my mom made, by the way. So homemade burgers. We got a few neighbors tonight and I think everybody's gonna be happy. This is one of the uh, recommendation that they have in Ioverlander, which we use tremendously. So happy. I just like cooking. Yes, you do. Absolutely. We could do all this inside. We've got the Battle of Orm battery power to do it, but you know, burgers spatter. So we don't want that all over our window shades. And it's kind of nice to cook outside when it's nice out. So oh, absolutely. we'll save those batteries for later when we need them, yes. which we might need tonight. Probably. It's dinner time for Kana too. Gonna get a piece of dinner, Kana. Hey, Kana, everybody's having yum, dinner. Yum, yum. Yep, smells good. I love having jalapenos on burger. Seriously, he just takes them and eats them right out of there. Yes, love, love, love peppers. After dinner, just decided to go for a walk with Kana. You just know it, it's gonna be a very quiet night. All you can hear just all this bird chirping and it's just so beautiful out here. I am blown away by the beauty of Labrador. This is enjoyable, guys, this is so beautiful. in a beautiful sunrise. Well, it's way past sunrise, but it's in the morning. Comfortable? Oh, it's really comfortable. I'm glad we got our sleeping bags out last night because it was mid 40s here last night, but I'm really comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get up. <laughs> I wish I had a handle I could put my coffee in so I don't even have to take my hands out. <laughs> and she's really annoyed that I'm not paying attention to her. Kana. What you doing, girl? Hey! Yeah. has dragged me away from my comfortable sleeping bag to walk up over 675 <laughs> stairs. Oh, I hate it already. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We are going up to the top of this hill to get a look out over the pole bay. And it is called the Tracy Hill. It's highly advised to dress in layers because you don't know the condition up there. So therefore, I'm dressed up in layers. That's pretty true. So this is partridge berries Ooh. and a blueberry. These are what's called partridge berries. They're not quite ripe yet. Partridge berries are delicious. We used to go picking them all the time, especially when we were up in Terra Nova at our camp. They were everywhere up there. These aren't ripe. When they're ripe, they'll be mostly red. But if you want to taste one, just you'll get an idea of what it tastes is like by you find it's very bitter. But you'll you probably get that it's going to taste good. Oh, it's very tart. To make jam or something with mm -hmm. it, I can see that too. Partridge berry pie, partridge berry jam. Taste of Newfoundland and Labrador. You know why they call this Red Bay? No. I have a guess. What's the guess? Well, because it was a whaling station, I wonder if the bay went, ran red with blood. Oh, you think so? Oh, I don't know. It's just my only guess. We are able to see the Red Bay Harbor 
And according to this sign, the evidence shows that people have lived at Red Bay for at least 8,000 years. 8,000 years! This is absolutely beautiful. So I can see why people want to live here. So right on the edge of the island there, that's a ship. There's a shipwreck at the edge of Saddle Island. I read it yesterday. And then this, on top of the uh, hill, there's uh, this random lake. The pond right behind me here is called the Pond on the Hill, and there's a local legend that Captain Kidd buried his treasure at the bottom of that pond. And several years ago, a bunch of locals came up and attempted to drain the pond, hoping to find Captain Kidd's treasure. And as they were starting to do it, they were getting to draining the pond, the skies opened up in a big thunder and lightning storm, and the rain just kept coming down. And there's a legend that there's a headless guy or something that you know would come after you if you decided to get the treasure. So these guys who were very superstitious just beat it out of here. They were so scared to death when that rainstorm came. And it refilled the pond and this is the pond that remains here today. And there might be treasure underneath. Da, 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 da. This is it. This is the end of the trail. Wow. The ocean is really beautiful. I mean, you can see for miles. That's why probably this is a perfect spot for whale watching. Unfortunately, it's not a whale season, so we don't see any whales, but it's worth the hike. This rock behind me is known as the American Man. Nobody really knows 100% sure why, but they think that it was probably named after the American whalers that used to come up here and try to spot whales in the Straits of Belle Isle. And then during World War II, they would also come up here and look out over the Straits of Belle Isle to see if there was any German U-boats or anything coming in to the area. So it served as a whaling post or a whaling lookout and also a lookout for German U-boats. Going downhill is definitely much easier. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful day. Really sad that we have to leave. Unfortunately, we have to keep going to continue on with our journey. I don't think Connor wants to come. Then we can go into certain places that we've never been. I think Connor's gonna stay here. Right, Connor? Fine with me. You coming? Come on. Let's go. It's so mean. Since Labrador is full of historical sites, we're gonna visit our second historical site in Labrador. She's catching a nap. At this point, everything is so beautiful. So there you go. Another good shot of beautiful rocks of some sort. province of Newfoundland and Labrador has I think 11 provincial historic sites and they have a pass that you can use to access all of them and you can buy that uh, at the link in the description. This is one of those beautiful provincial historic sites at the southern end of Labrador. This is Point Armor provincial historic site. This is probably one of my favorite lighthouses around we visited. Look at that, you can't just ignore this lighthouse. This lighthouse is actually overlooked Newfoundland across from the strait and I'm so happy to have blue sky and nice breeze. Come on in. Right now, I'm going to tell you guys that you can go way to the top right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, oh, you have an elevator all the way up? No elevator. No. <laughs> Lots of stairs today. Lots of huh? stairs today, yep. Oh, 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 one of these stairs. The cat is coming up. It's really well maintained, for sure. We are now 75 feet above ground level, which is approximately the same height as the main mast of the famous Basque whaling ship San Juan. We only mention this to get your mind off the climb. <laughs> if you were at the Bonavista Lighthouse, you'd be at the top by now. <laughs> Love this trivia thing, it's just <laughs> funny. I'm not sure like if we're bigger than this. We're still on the top. <laughs> Watch your head. Um, even right here across the street here, they have another dialect that's different than ours. Yeah. So kind of Our guide told us all the significant facts about Point Amour Lighthouse, completed in 1857. 
This is the tallest lighthouse in Atlantic Canada and the second tallest in all of Canada at 109 feet or 33 meters high. These intricate lenses, all original, were built 163 years ago and are in pristine condition and still operating to this day. 132. 132 supplies. Yeah. All right. Well, and thank you, ma'am. You're thank you so much. All right, you have a good day. <laughs> if I was a, a firefighter, I'd be sliding down this way now. <laughs> All right, let, let's do it. Really awesome. I love this kind of thing. Yeah. Take your time. Don't hit your head on anything. I guess people back in the 1858 were smaller people. And in much better shape than me. <laughs> Going down this easier than... Yeah. And downstairs, there's a small museum where the lighthouse keeper used to live in order to operate this lighthouse. And here's the reason why I'm free as the wind and the waves on the sand. There's no place I would rather be than here in Newfoundland. And just like that, we are back in Quebec, the land of the French language. And we went to the space-time continuum back an hour and a half. The land of the youth. Still not there yet. <laughs> Take the next left onto Avenue Jean Cartier. But before we're heading back to the ferry terminal, there's one last stop that we have to make. Hello. Hello there. You guessed it. This is a Quebec liquor store. There's a myth that there's cheaper alcohol prices in Quebec than those in Newfoundland and Labrador. So naturally, we have to check it out. 15 and 14. Is that cheaper? A little bit. Quebec beer? Yeah. Montreal. So we were stopped at the SAQ because Holoff needed to get some things and the one thing he needed was some seltzer. I got myself an IPA and he also got himself a bottle of wine. The reason we stop here is because alcohol is a little bit cheaper here in Quebec than it is in Newfoundland. In fact, there's some import restrictions on bringing liquor back into Newfoundland because the taxes are higher over there. We're not getting gas though because that crap is expensive, $1.71 for a liter. I guess we're not getting diesel here. No, wait till we get back in Newfoundland. Whoever thought you'd hear you say this, I'll say that. Well, that was just a very, very small part of Labrador. I really hope you get back here sometime because I want to go to Churchill Falls so bad. That's where my uncle lived, that's where my dad went fishing, and the falls is supposedly beautiful. Yeah, it's just like a little taste of Labrador. And if you liked our video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow our journeys around Canada, press the subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications every time we post something new, hit the bell. Thanks a lot, boys. Thank you. It is safe to assume that as soon as we land in Labrador, there's going to be a lot of labs everywhere just greeting us. <sighs> These are the weird things that Hoth comes up with in his head. Lab puppies are cute. Yeah, but that was just strange. But cute. In, I think it's called Red Cove, right? In Red Bay. In Red Bay.